In this lesson, we focus on mathematics, math 142, kinematics of a particle. We shall study equations of motion and their applications. Right, focusing on third questions, we, we shall focus on this particular question here. And we are told here that the water sprinkler positioned at the base of a hill releases a stream of water with a velocity of 15 meters per second as shown. Determine the point B where the water strikes the ground on the hill. So when we need to determine, um, right, the point B where the water strikes the ground, um, right, on the hill. Assume that the hill is defined by the equation um, y equals 0 0.05 x squared meters and neglect the size of the sprinkler. Okay, and so we have exactly this kind of a situation here. So there are certain kinds of uh, um, equations of motion that uh, we're going to obviously focus on at this point. But now um, we are told here that uh, the water sprinkler position at the base of a hill releases a stream of water with a velocity of 15 meters per second. Right, so if the velocity is actually exactly 15 meters per second, it means that uh, we have a couple of things. So we can view ourselves as having, for, for example, the certain velocities, right? We have certain velocities, like we have uh, the velocity um, at the beginning, and uh, we have uh, now this velocity at the beginning that is given, can actually be determined uh, and we can be determined very, very precisely. But how precise can we actually be in a position to determine that? So you can say, for instance, um, we can determine V, let's call it V, um, right, let's call it V zero X. Because immediately when this is projected at that angle, the couple of things uh, that uh, we can obviously take into account. There are certain components of this and the angle is theta. So that now the components here are that uh, immediately when this is projected, there's gonna be some ve velocity v zero x and there's gonna be some velocity v zero y in the y direction. The v zero x, it's going to be given as follows, right? So the V0X, it's going to be given by what, right? It's going to be given by 15 uh, cosine theta. And this is actually 15, um, all right? You can just say 15 cosine 60, right? So it's actually 15 cosine uh, 60 degrees, which I'll get the answer. Then there's also, v zero y which is 15 15 the sine of 60 v zero y right so which means that you shall have 15 times cosine 60 Right, and this is actually exactly 7.5. So we shall have 7.5 meters per second for the velocity um, um, in the x direction and then the velocity in the y is going to be given by 15, the sign of that, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the sign. I hope I actually have punched that incorrect, yeah. So, here we're going to also have the 15, um, the sine of 60. And the 15, the sine of 60 is actually 12.99. So we shall have actually that one, which is actually 12.99. So this one will be 12.99 uh, meters per second. So these are sort of the velocity we're getting. Okay, now, um, then we need to consider the uh, 
the fact that as it moves up like this, as uh, the water moves, because we have the water sprinkler, um, now there is what you call horizontal motion. So we shall consider horizontal motion of the water, um, obviously, because now um, determine the point where the water strikes the ground. But the water, when it moves like this, uh, it progresses horizontally, but also it actually is, um, it has what you call vertical motion. Right, so let us uh, reason this out together. So if we have both the vertical and horizontal motion, right, what are the implications of this? So looking at the horizontal motion, we shall use the equation of motion x equals x naught plus v zero x t. And uh, this means that x equals x naught, but obviously if we say it starts at the origin so that we have zero, um, they are in the beginning. And then simultaneously we have the V zero X, which is um, like uh, exactly that one, you can call it 7.5 T. This means that X is 7.5 multiplied by the time. But also you have the, the fact that as it begins to move like this, there is a, what you call vertical motion right so now looking at vertical motion um right we have uh, exactly the following here right okay now this is going to be our horizontal motion and if this is going to be our horizontal motion there's something we need to take into account um it is the fact that we know that our y for example is 0.05 x squared, 0 0.05. Our x is 7.5 t and you square that. Okay, you substitute here. And uh, now we're gonna actually get the answer to this substitution. And if you do that, you'll have exactly 0 0.05 times 7.5 squared. And then this becomes 2.8125. 2.8125. So we're getting exactly 2.8125 T squared. Okay, so this is sort of what then we are actually able to obtain as this particular function here. But now with this, um, this is about the horizontal motion. And then uh, we need to obviously now investigate the vertical motion. Let us look at vertical motion. Right, so looking at vertical motion, the couple of things that uh, we need to take into account here as a matter of fact, um, and let us uh, begin to investigate this um, very, very accurately and see what we need to get. Right, so this becomes the following. So for the vertical motion, we shall have y equals y0 plus v0 y t plus one half a c t squared right so at this point uh, we take note of the fact that uh, this is actually what we're going to have where our acceleration itself becomes constant but now let us uh, reason these together. So we're gonna start and understand these as follows. So we're gonna say, for instance, we have y. Now the y is zero uh, beginning from the origin. And then the 15, um, this one, we saw that it is 15, the sine of 60, t. And then it is uh, that uh, this acceleration 
because uh, this object is actually obviously moving upwards, uh, but we understand that the acceleration is actually obviously um, towards the ground. Okay, I want us to understand this very, very carefully. So now the couple of things uh, that uh, we need to take into account here as a matter of as a matter of fact, um, it is that when this particular object is moving in that particular manner, and uh, we need to consider the aspect of its acceleration, right? And the acceleration we shall be determining. So and everything of uh, this is actually in meters per second. So if it is in meters per second for us, um, it would actually mean um, that uh, you are um, considering the, the vertical motion and considering the vertical motion um, as uh, and the acceleration that is um, always downwards. Now, obviously, let's pause here to reason together. So if uh, we are here and we're saying that this, if an object is moving upwards, so you choose the direction. So in other words, if you choose, we choose upwards as positive, right? Because the 15 would have a component that is upwards, meaning it's gonna be positive because the velocity is uh, obviously upwards um, here. But you understand that the acceleration, which is constant, it's going to be actually downwards, right? And so if it is actually downwards, um, it means that as much as the velocity is positive, but the acceleration is downwards and therefore it is negative. So you're going to have minus 9.81. And uh, now, obviously, we're looking at this in meters per second, but it can also be done in, in feet as well. Um, right, um, in feet per, per second, right? And with these determined, then this is actually exactly t squared like that. So um, we have got this one, um, which is uh, uh, 12.99 for the 15 sine 60 is 12.99. So we're gonna have actually 12.99 t and uh, we have uh, this here. Okay, so yeah, we can do this one with the calculator just to make sure that we get the correct answer. So that in the end, what we're getting is 0 0.5 times um, 9.81. And uh, we have exactly this, which is 4.905, 4.905, which is 4.905, which is right clearly. Uh, to avoid mistakes, 4.905, then we have exactly uh, our t squared there, like so. Upon careful examination, um, what actually do we have here? We need to remember that therefore this gives us an equation, we can call equation two, but we actually have got another equation here from the horizontal motion, we can call equation one, but now y is equal to this. So from, from um, equation one, we know that y is 2.8125. We know that y is actually 2.8125 t squared. We called this one the first equation. So now if they're equal, so one equals two. 2.8125 t squared, which is 12.99 t minus 4.905 t squared. Okay, now you add everything up because when you add everything up, this one and this one are like terms, so you're going to add them up. And then if you do, If you do 2.8125, 2.8125 plus 
2.8125 plus 4.905, and uh, what we're getting is uh, 7.7175, 7.7175, right, so we're getting 7.7175. T squared minus 12.99 T equals zero, which is 7.7175 T squared minus um, you know, 7.7175 T squared minus 12.99 T. 12.99 T and this equals zero, okay? And then now we can factor out T as a common factor and we have 7.7175 T minus 12.99 and this equals zero, which means we shall have that time equals zero at the origin or we shall have that time is 12.99 and then you divide by 7.7175, and therefore we shall use a calculator to get the time here. Shall use a calculator to get the time here, and the time is gonna be, it's gonna be exactly 12.99, you divide by 7.71, Seven five. See what we're getting. We're getting one point six eight is the time. So we're getting one point six eight three two. One point six eight three two. Right. We're getting one point six eight three two. So we're getting one point six eight three two seconds. Right and. Once you get this, then we actually need to get the coordinates. So, which means that we remember, we need to recall what we got. So, we got that our x is 7.5t. Our x is 7.5t. Uh, and the t is 1.68. 3, 2. Let us check what we're getting here. So we use our calculator. So we have uh, this one. So we're going to multiply these by 7.5. 7.5. And then this is uh, what? It is actually 12.62, which is the X component. 12.62, which is the X component, which means therefore, um, we have here that this is 12.62 uh, meters, but we're not done. We also need to get the X and the Y component, but you already know the Y component. So we spoiled for choice. We can use this one, um, right? We can use equation one, which is 2.8125 T squared. Right, it is 2.8125 T squared. And this is 2.8125 T squared. What is the T? It's uh, this one, you can put, yeah. Okay, you can put this one, you can put this one for the T. I'm gonna put a more accurate result, which is 12.99, 7.7175. And then you're gonna square this. And it's approximately what we're going to get. So, um, right. So we're going to have, let's see, if you're going to do 2.8125 open bracket, 12.99, Seven point seven one seven five 
and then you close. Okay. And then now, what was then getting the y to be, oh, there's a square. Did I put the square? I did not do the square. Okay, I did not do the square. Let me see. Let me punch properly. 2.8125, open bracket, fraction, 12.9977.71.75, close bracket, squared. Right, it is actually exactly 7.97, 7 7.97. So you have uh, actually exactly 7.97 meters. And obviously assume that the hue is defined by the equation, neglect the size of the sprinkler. So the answer is this, we determine the point B. And so this means we can say answer, the point B, which is the coordinates X and Y, is actually the point B where X is this one, 12.62, 12.62, and the B, the Y component is 7.97 meters, right? So what we're going to do then, um, it was awesome having this discussion right now. I know that we have uh, obviously taken a little bit of time, but uh, let me see. I think that maybe um, with your permission, um, I can um, write. I think that this is pretty much uh, very, very sufficient for today, depending on your case.